Feast of St. Stephen, but the readings are taken from the Sunday within the octave of the Nativity. Therefore, the, the, the epistle appointed to be read for this morning is taken from St. Paul's Epistle to the Galatians. Brethren, as long as the heir is a child, he differs in no way from a slave, though he is the master of all. But he is under guardians and stewards until the time set by his father. So we too, when we were children, were enslaved under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem those who were under the law, that he might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so that he is no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, an heir also through God. And the Holy Gospel is taken from St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. At that time, Joseph and Mary, the mother of Jesus, were marveling at the things spoken concerning him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and for the rise of many in Israel, and for a sign that shall be contradicted. And thy own soul a sword shall pierce, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also Anna, a prophetess, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Azar. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years from her maidenhood, and by herself as a widow to eighty-four years. She never left the temple with fastings and prayers, worshiping night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give praise to the Lord and spoke of him to all who were awaiting the redemption of Israel. And when they had fulfilled all things prescribed in the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, into their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was full of wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Thus for this Sunday's Holy Gospel. My beloved people, there was something that we left out of the bulletin this time, which I merely mentioned to you now, and that is that Thursday of this week is the first Thursday, Friday is the first Friday, and Saturday is the first Saturday with the usual instructions that go with these days of which you know all about. Next Saturday is uh, the feast of the circumcision of our Lord and is a holy day of obligation just as Christmas was. Therefore, we have to go uh, we must attend Mass on Saturday, again next week, Saturday and Sunday. And the Masses on Saturday next week will be only at 6 a.m. and at 10 a.m. And the reason why this is so is in deference. What? It's Thursday and Friday, not first Thursday and Friday, only Saturday is first Thursday. That's right. Thanks for Father Francis who keeps me straight all the time. It, uh, only Saturday of this week is the first Saturday of the month of, 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 of January, not a Thursday and Friday. So therefore, correction please, Thursday and Friday are not first fr Thursday and Saturday, uh, Friday. But uh, in deference to the uh, strong element of the world, because New Year's Day, as we know, is given into other uh, interests. We keep the uh, schedule of Masses restricted only to the two, namely 6 and 10.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My beloved people, as the world turns, today, that which we honor, respect, love, and obey is over. And we turn our minds and hearts to other interests. As we have noted before, the central figure of this moment is no longer the central figure in this, at this moment because it is culturally and politically incorrect to give that figure any recognition. Therefore, we have to put him away. And we come to what is now in part of the great holiday season that we have. Um, instead of beginning, as we have as Christians, beginning the holy season of Christmas, and whereas the other part of the world has put Christmas away, we now come to that part that point of the year where people, generally speaking, turn their attention to what they call making their usual New Year's resolutions. And these resolutions amount to really nothing. They um, perhaps have to, they're stirred on or spurred on by the fact that maybe our consciences are beginning to uh, give us some impetus as to something has to be done in order to uh, understand purpose. That there should be purpose in our lives. So each year we try to work on purpose by making resolutions. Uh, resolutions said such as I'm not going to be late for dinner and I'm going to brush my teeth every morning, and such other silly uh, little resolutions that people make during these times of the year. That uh, they uh, uh, depart from that which is important and make these resolutions, which of course after three days are completely forgotten anyway, and we go on from there on. My beloved people, as we said on the feast of Christmas, and we turned our attention from the beauty that is around and about, even in our own little church, we turned our attention to this vase, which is to my right, and we see in all of its beauty uh, a bouquet of thorns. You might say, well, how gloomy and how out of place are thorns at this time, at this joyful, happy time of the year. How completely out of place, how much in bad taste is this being done? My beloved people, where is the bad taste? Our blessed Lord, from his first moment, suffered. And as we pointed out ourselves earlier, That this suffering, as he said, learn of me, has been passed on to us. That doesn't mean that our lives must be dedicated to suffering. It simply means that in our lives, we should be willing, first and foremost of all, to understand purpose. Why, precisely, are we here? Did we put ourselves here? Was it of our will that we are here, that I am here? Was it our will that I was given birth? A 
Or was it simply a biological accident or whatever, because some people speak of it today as such, that I am here? Then why am I here? And who put me here? And therefore, what was the purpose of him who put me here? And as we've pointed out constantly and constantly, not to be morose or any such like, then what is to become of me after that purpose for which I was put here has either been fulfilled or perhaps even frustrated by my own indulgence and lack of self-mastery and so on. We treat Almighty God rather casually, don't we? The world does. Sometimes it sounds as though I am aiming these remarks at you, and you know better. But the world um, looks upon these remarks as, as such as out of place because in our world, The thing that is important is fun and frolic. That's not the reason why I'm here. There's only one reason. And I have to come to grips with that. I have to come to grips with that in my commitment. And that is my purpose here is God and God alone. All other things to the contrary, notwithstanding. And to the extent that I can come to grips with that purpose for which I am here, to that extent will I have peace of mind. To that extent will I be satisfied with what I have to do. To that extent will I be com uh, uh, complacent, not complacent, but uh, uh, acceptable or accepting the crosses, the thorns that are placed upon me in my daily life experiences. You know how I feel about New Year's resolutions. They are worthless because first, as I said earlier, they're silly. And secondly, they don't amount to a row of pins. Because I am not really willing to make a resolution that has some value to it. And what is the value of any resolution? It's not a vow to begin with. It is merely a promise to me. And it presumes that I am placing on me enough sense of responsibility to maintain that resolution and to live under the weight of that resolution. It has nothing to do with the silly things like I'm going to smoke less, I'm going to drink less beer, I'm going to do this, I'm going to take a, less drinks, I'm going to, and so on, all those which never amount to anything. The only thing that I have to place before my mind's eye, if any, is I am bound to adore God before all other considerations and am I doing that or am I or am I sitting there and extemporizing with God today I just don't feel like praying oh I don't uh, I, I don't feel like going to church this morning I don't um, uh, well you know uh, I'm really too weak uh, I need nourishment 
Therefore, uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with me eating uh, a steak on Friday because steaks uh, meat give me nourishment. Therefore, and they give me meat gives me strength, and I can go on, and I can do my work better. Jesus Christ could have argued that way too, couldn't he? The night is too cold. The night is too dark. There is no room for me any place. They don't really want me. It is, it is rather difficult for me, most difficult for me, infinitely difficult for me, to put on myself the vesture of humankind, of mankind. Therefore, I just don't think I'll go. Now, we have said in here before, and for emphasis perhaps we shall repeat it, that recently we had the terrible storms that we all know about and how we all ran. We got into our car and there was an exodus. In our feeble attempt to run away from the wind and the sea. We were frightened by the wind and the sea. We did not want the wind to hurt us. We did not want the wind to destroy our property. We did not want to be covered over with the, with the waters of the ocean. We were frightened by the wind. We were frightened by the water. And we ran. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people ran seeking safety from the wind and the raging waters. Didn't they? And yet, they gave no thought, did they? to him who made the wind and the sea. Something is missing in our mentality and the culture of our world, of culture of our society has removed the only thing that makes any sense out of our, the center of all things. And what has it placed in its place? A piece of paper, green in color, that has no more value than a piece of paper, green in color. That's as far as our limited thoughts can go. And we only measure purpose. We only think of purpose not so much in terms of the fulfillment, the real fulfillment of that purpose as we think in terms of how many pieces of paper, green in color, that we have accumulated over the past number of years. And so at the end of a certain period of time, we find that all we have to fall back upon for our support in our protection are pieces of paper green in color. And that's not enough. And our children 
have been taught that this is where the value is. And we all know the sadness and the devastating frustrations and confusion of the Christmas season. And the only thing that keeps the Christmas season from being a complete waste out is the nervousness that is involved in the giving of gifts, things. I give you this, you give me that. Neither of which is satisfactory. So the day after Christmas, I guess that'll be tomorrow because Christmas was yesterday, is the biggest mad rush in the history of the entire year of people running with arms filled with gifts they received the night before to exchange them for something else. So the big day of exchangement is tomorrow. I think if it's not a holiday, I don't, I'm not sure at the moment. And so that is why it is so important to wipe Christmas out of our imagination as soon as possible. Because the gift part is all over. There's nothing else to it. So we now foot have brought in sports. I use that generic because if I don't use it generically, I will be uh, generically punished. We've introduced sports in full blast to keep our minds off of our depressions. And maybe because of that, I will not commit suicide. It sounds terrible, doesn't it? Because it is terrible. And the center of our being has been wiped out. If only we would turn our attention to that, would we find peace of mind. New Year's. In spite of it all, and for us, my beloved people, and for all those that we hold near and dear to ourselves, indeed, indeed, I wish we all have a good year. I want us to have a good year. Have you noticed in recent years, and now even children, little children, have noticed how quickly the year flies by. It's over with before it even gets started. And someone like ourselves who have the confidence of people, you would be amazed really and truly amazed at people. We have, as you know, we have contacts all over the country now. In some cases, even in other parts of the world. But there seems to be a dark cloud hanging over the heads of thinking people as if the people are sitting there waiting, waiting for something to take place. There seems to be fear, real fear. It's not explainable. It cannot be touched. It can't be described. But there seems to be a real fear a real fear even of futility. Why? Why am I doing, why am I building this barn? Because tonight it 
just might get blown away. So why am I doing And then come again, the pieces of paper. I can keep them in my pocket. They'll be safe there, maybe. There seems to be a fear of something. It's general. Even amongst ourselves, we can feel this. And this is where we have to have faith. This is where we have to have belief. This is where we have to have hope. This is where we have to have adoration. This is where purpose comes in. As long as I am aware, in all honesty of conscience, in all honesty of conscience, as long as I am aware, weak though the awareness may be, just so it's honest, that I am doing the best I can conscientiously with regard to purpose, my purpose, and to the degree that I am able to stay in the state of grace, to that degree then, should I allow fear to interrupt the peace of my mind? We're going to this new year, my beloved people, and I do wish you a very happy new year. Not just for the newness of it, but for the entire year. I do not know what this day next year would be like. I have no idea. I don't even know if I will be here. If I'm, even if my feet still are touching the face of this earth a year from today, I do not know that. And neither do you know if your feet will be touching the face of this earth a year from now. But I pray that we will be here. And I pray that peace, and serenity, and goodness, and that everlasting word which I am constantly, 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 constantly bringing to our attention, love, moves us. I have said how many times to you, and I must repeat it again, especially at this time, serious people, with serious intention. And I bring it to conclusion, giving serious worship to a serious God. May you be blessed my very precious people. And as we pray for each other, let us hope and pray that the grace of God will be in our hearts and minds and souls and that we will be a pleasing sight, a pleasing people in his sight. That's the best I've got to give you. And that's the best I hope I know. That's the best 
that you've got to give us. That's where she stands. And that we must pray that God will give us the comprehension of this amazing fact. My dearest friends, brothers and sisters, my people, I thank you I truly thank you for the witness that you give. I'm sure God himself is grateful as well.